Hey guys, welcome back to my Negro Custom Guitars. And this is the CNC Guitar Build Season 2, where I share with you my process from design to manufacturing an electric guitar. And in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about uh, fret slots, design and tool pads, and going through some tool pads of the top of the neck. So, let's go to Fusion and we can begin. Hey guys, welcome back to Fusion 360 and here you're looking at the model of the neck. Now, fret slots can be quite tricky to cut and to model, especially if you want a nice slot following the radius of the fretboard rather than having a straight line going right through. Now, the best way that I've discovered with working with Fusion 360 is the following that I'm going to show you. Now, first of all, I want to show you on the Lullaby guitar build that I did last year, which you can see the playlist right on top of the screen. You find a link. Now, I want to show you on this model first because this is the easier method. Well, it's the same method, but since the headless it's a multi-scale, the frets are in perpendicular with the center line and that's make it an extra step in the process. But first I want to show you the normal procedure. By the way, I want to apologize if the audio is not one of the best. It's just that outsider doing the road and it's crazy in this couple the last two days. So please bear with me. Okay, back to the model. As you can see, the fret slots are not modeled and are not modeled for one reason because I don't use, uh, I don't need them to be modeled for creating my toolpad and this is how I work. Now what I do is I take the, take this part of the drawing, this is the sketch that I use to cut the rest of the material of the fretboard, which I uh, talked about in the previous episode because I had a question about it. I use this line in particular and what I do with it, well of course I will have the frets, these are um, the sketch, the sketch of these frets is just on top of the fretboard. I can easily use a trace a uh, tool pad and go down to mill or trim mill, but that I will have a just a straight line here. So what I do, as I said, I take this this line here, this part of this radius, I copy it, Control C, paste it, Control V. Wait, I need to go into the sketch. Now, as I said, Control C to copy, Control V to paste it. It's here because it picked up the diameter. As you can see, there's an extra line. And I need to carefully place this line on each of these frets. So in order to put them accurately, what I do as I use the point to point option, I pick up the center line of this radius and I paste it on the center line or move it on the center line of the fret. And that's I have a line. Hit OK. As you can see, the fretboard is not modeled because we're editing the sketch that I used to model the fretboard. But anyway, and that's just it. And the rest is just to paste again, point to point, center to the other fret, and hit OK, and repeat for the rest of the frets. Let's finish the sketch. Now, let's turn off the straight frets, and like this, I have two lines following the radius of the fretboard. 
and then in the manufacturing option when I'm doing the tool pad which I'll show you on the actual headless guitar I just use a trace following this line and go down 2 mil in my case and the tool will follow the radius of the fretboard rather than having a straight line going through the fretboard okay now back to our headless model and here I have the same sketches these are the frets sketch that sits right on top of the fretboard and the only difference between this model and the previous one is that obviously the frets since it's a multi-scale the frets aren't perpendicular to the center line and this for me adds other steps before doing the same thing with the sketch of the radius of the fretboard so what i did because if i copy this this line for example and i paste it um, on top on this as you can see obviously it will be perpendicular to the center line but my fret is at an angle so that won't work so i needed to figure out uh, a way of pasting this line along the length of this of these frets at various angles and the only way that i could think of and i trust that there are other ways for sure but this is the only way that i know and it worked for me so what i did i constructed a plane at an angle picking up this line as a reference and turn it at 90 degrees and like this i have a plane following exactly that angle and then i just repeat this procedure for the rest of the frets creating planes at angles for the for all of the 24 frets as you can see and then I create another sketch using this plane and then I just paste that line which I copied then do the same thing on the other plane create a sketch using that plane and paste that line and move it from point to point and I repeat that for other 24 times until I have all the frets now I can turn off all the planes and I have all the lines a nice radius line following all of my frets and they're all at the right angle and this is the best way that I found yeah it takes a lot of time not really much but it is quite annoying to do but at this point is the only way that I find that I found that works for me so let's head up to the manufacture tab and see my toolpad for these frets now here I'm using a trace operation which you can find it here I'm using a 0.5 millimeter bit very small quite fragile in fact cutting feed rate is around 300 millimeters per minute and I go down a maximum of 0.5 uh, millimeter every time now since it's a trace operation I check the axial offset passes 
and then I manually put uh, minus 2.25 millimeter. This is how deep the slot is going to be and how much uh, each time the bit is going down, which is 0.5. And then I just select uh, the radius fret uh, sketch and hit OK. Now, just before starting machining the fret, it is very important to have the fretboard radius. So in order to do that, what I do first is remove most of the material with a parallel tool pad. Here I'm using a 3 8 bit so that I can remove most of the material, leaving 0.5 material from the top of the fretboard and then coming down with a 1 4th ball end mill, um, another parallel pass, this time using a 1 millimeter step over, so it will end up having a nicer finish. Okay, so next up, I'll have some tool pads to remove material from the back of the neck, which is this one. I'm using 3.8 flat, so I can remove most of material. I'm leaving some material on this wall, so then I can come with a down cut bit and remove that material, leaving a nicer finish. Then I can continue machining some other stuff, for example, the excess for the thrust rod. This is a contour. It's a contour operation. I'm removing material for this pocket. Using a 3mm router bit. And then I'm removing this recessed part so I can have a place for the cover and then um, I'm finishing up um, with the same bit just to have a nicer finish just to do a final pass uh, with, with a better, with a sharper bit. Now, regarding the, well, so-called headstock, first I want to remove the rest of material using a large bit, so I'll have a nice flat surface here. I will leave material just on the radial part, which means to the side of the bit, but I won't leave material on the axial side, which is underneath the bit, so I'll have a nice flat uh, surface with a nice big bit.
and then with a quarter inch ball end mill I can smooth out this little radius here. Then I'll machine this little contour, quite easy. And using a 3 millimeter bit, I'll machine the slot for the nut. And then with the same 3 millimeter bit, here I will remove material, it's a pocket operation, I remove material so that the oval hardware will sit between the fretboard material and then a final contour pass to remove um, as a finish pass, basically. So guys, that's it for today. I hope you liked it, enjoyed it, and learned something from it. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer them in the next episode. If you're new to this channel and you're enjoying my content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be aware about my future releases. And to the new subscribers and to the old ones, take care and goodbye.